going. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Spin Around. I'm here with my boys, Cal and Petey. And today we're looking at that interesting subject that's happening. Everybody's been talking about it. Yes, everybody's been talking about it. Daredevil actor Charlie Cox from the Netflix Marvel show is going to be in Spider-Man 3. Woo! Wow. So what does that mean? Does that mean Marvel Netflix is going to be coming in? You know? So here, I'm going to talk to my boys right now. What are your takes on this? I'll start off with P since Cal's pissing me off now. Go, P. Um, I agree with you. 100%. Yes. <laughs> doing that. Cal, you got your three seconds back? Okay. You, you so yeah. And I will so, be at your house. Huh? I don't understand this. I don't know why. The, I have no idea why he's in the film. I doubt that he's playing Daredevil. Um, I would say that there's getting a little um, too many characters and this whole trying to do a multiverse in Marvel, when Marvel doesn't really doesn't have that much of a multiverse, is a little too much for me. But they're they seem like they're they're going further with it. And people just, you know, Marvel, you know, as they say in Hollywood, Marvel hates being, you know, Marvel doesn't want to be first, they only want to be second. It's not a multiverse, it's a movie verse. Like, hey, let's just throw in the guys who played in the previous movies. If it was actually following the Marvel multiverse, then that might be something. Even then, the Marvel, mul DC had like Earth 1, Earth 2, Earth 3, where you have multiple versions of these characters. Marvel doesn't necessarily have multiple Earths. They have multiple versions of popular characters. So you'll see like 16 different versions of Spider-Man and maybe like a whole different, you know, some different versions of, uh, you know, the popular, really just the popular characters. And then everybody else is pretty much one version. There's no multiple versions of Daredevil. Well, one of the things that you, I mean, if they were going for the real deal of it, the alternate reality of Marvel is in what if. And then no, have no interest in doing any of that. They're doing their own thing. They're doing like the WB thing. So it's like, we're doing, hey, this multiverse is going to be the, have the Daredevil guy and probably Jessica Jones. And um, we'll have, um, who else do we have? I don't know who else is in there. So, all, the, all the different Spider-Mans and, and Jamie Foxx. And oh, wow, they're all running together. It's like, uh, well, this is some, from an article from comicbook.com that came out. They were talking about him. And they've been following some of this stuff for a little bit where, um, you know, that he's been on the set and that most likely he's in, he's doing, it looks like he's doing uh, the Matt Murdock role, whether he'll actually be playing a version of Daredevil or the same version of Daredevil on a Marvel um, Netflix show. We're not 100% sure. We don't know. But, but Feige was asked this at uh, one of those press junkets when the whole WandaVision, they were talking about WandaVision. Hey, what happened to these Marvel shows? Are they, uh, what, what's up with them? And he literally said, they're all on board. You know, we don't, anything can be done basically. You know what I'm trying to say? With these characters. And the impact of what these characters, these Jeff Lowe characters, um, <laughs> who was the executive producer of these shows, is very interesting. Charlie Cox was very popular as Daredevil. Some people thought he was a little bit more grittier than they'd hoped. But, you know, bringing them into the Marvel verse, the, Mar the MCU is just, it's just there, bro. You know, it's an easy win. Hell, you could probably do another show with him. You know, um, I know there's controversy re re revolving around the Punisher because of how his um, emblem has, has been adopted as a vigilante by police law enforcement. But hey, you know, a lot of us like the Punisher movies, the TV shows, right? I mean, where, you know, but you where just, do these guys fit in that in, in that film universe if you're bringing them in there? The Netflix stuff was really, it was supposed to be, okay, this is going to be lower level. Um, yeah more crime, darker, all of that type of stuff. And we've also been, with maybe with the exception of like Power Man, maybe Iron Fist, most of these guys would die. <laughs> Some of the sequences that we've seen that the Avengers and these other characters have to go up against. So I don't know where exactly they fit. They did a, I mean, with Daredevil, they did a, I mean, they really downplayed his powers in terms of the radar sense. You know, they really downplayed that aspect, which is allows him to do things that are, that would seem superhuman. And, you know, with Iron Fist, oh, you know, you know, they, I mean, that, oh, well, I guess I can't, I, I'm getting tongue tied thinking about just how bad uh, they, they did Danny Rand at the end of the day. But then, you know, I'm, I, for me, it's less about the Punisher and the controversy with the Punisher and more about where the heck do you put this guy? This is a guy who's coming out shooting and killing criminals dead out. 
there's no, there's no like mitigation of this. So what happens when you put them with these other people? And how do they even fit with these other people at the end of the day? So that's for me how they would make, I mean, these, it was almost two different universes because they almost, there was never any, in, there was never any like zen, inter, like crossing over between say a uh, power, a power man and say like Falcon, that type of stuff with these guys. Oh, hey, what's going on, Luke? Hey, you know, what's going on, Sam? You know, just never happened. You just said another universe. So then it plays to what they're doing. Thank you. Oh, oh no. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Without you even realizing it, you, you went into Feige's master plan. You know, it's, it's, it's for scary. everyone that complains about the well, how does this fit, but um, I just think it's too. I mean, having T Charlie Cox in there, but then having what was that guy, um, um, Andrew Garfield, and all those other Spider Men. That's where it gets too cosmic for me. So. Let's see. Well, I don't know. I haven't been too much a fan of any of these Spider-Man movies, so we'll see what happens. Not even the Spider-Verse. No, I like that thing. Not I said. That's why they bring. That's why they bring. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. So they, 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 they did. They did that. Now we're gonna do it on a billion level. We need a billion. Give us a billion dollar, a billion dollar movie. So we need more characters. Get people bumping into each other. Sony has to develop their own um, Spider Verse, just like the um, Fox was doing with the X Men, right? They had they had TV shows, Legion. They had uh, movies. So I mean, now you know, Disney has to, excuse me, Marvel has to um, rebuild all that. I think it's a great. I think it's a great. Thing. I think it's good to see, it, especially when people like these particular characters to come forward. I don't know if all of them should come come back, but I mean, generally some of the more popular ones should. Um, some of the actors are probably not available. I know the guy who plays. Um, Luke Cage um, is now on a show called Evil, which is, um, I guess, they got renewed again. So I don't know if he's available. But, you know, with Marvel money, anything, anybody can have, anything can happen. You know what I'm trying to say? Well, we can get Night Nurse back. Well, she's on Disney. Night Nurse, yeah, but I mean, come on. She, she's going to go back to that little role where she's the big kahuna where, as opposed to Ashoka in Star Wars. And she's the... You just said it's Disney, right? So they could do anything. Yeah, that is true. They could do whatever they want to do. I mean, you will get... Charlie Cox, because everybody loved Daredevil. You will not get the Punisher because they have no idea how to, that, that's just not going to happen. And you may get, let's see, they'll probably try to see if they can fit Jessica Jones in there so we can just have the affirmative action, we love women stuff. But aside of that, it's pretty much Daredevil. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yo, you just, you're trying my resolutions this year already, right? It just started yesterday, today, and you want to try my resolutions. I'm, I'm trying to go with your resolution. We're, gonna, we're telling the people the truth, right? Jessica Jones was a fine show. Okay, fine show, fine show. So, gentlemen, is there any, you know they canceled um, Hellstrom um, on... Um, with good reason. <laughs> on Hulu. So, you know, hopefully this doesn't go the way of... Uh, well, that's a movie, so I don't know. But there's a lot of other movies coming out. Like we were talking about, a lot of shows are coming out for Disney. So we have the, right after this, is after uh, One Division, you have um, Falcon and Winter Soldier. And then you have Loki playing, um, what do you say, Doctor Strange. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of options for them. And don't forget what they are. They do have a what if show coming up on Marvel, um, but it's animated. Okay. P? Yeah, I know. But it's but animated was versions of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's clearly the what ifs of the cinematic universe, not what ifs of the comic book. Okay, so I, I guess I, I'll have to explain to you again. Comic books is this amount of people. <laughs> TV shows is this amount of people watching. Uh, and movies is this amount of people watching. So yeah. which which of the three levels do you think they want to um, work with first? So hey. I'm just asking somebody. They're going to do whatever they want. You work with the one that has the best stories, and the ones that have the best stories with the comic. So we don't care about what if. And I care. We don't care about what if Captain America's girlfriend became Captain Britain. We don't really care about that. Yes, we do. I find that very interesting. I want to see what happens to Peggy. What? what? This was no, you don't. Action hero. She was already a hero. She didn't need no extra powers. You saw the TV show. Yeah, I saw her jumping that car. 
two, two seasons of kicking ass. I was like, how the heck did she? How the heck did she manage doing that? She's a superhero. Two two seasons of kicking ass. What more can you ask for? Did she didn't need? Well, she could have used the suit. I would I wouldn't mind her in an outfit, but not an animated one. God damn it! But is it her voice though? So you know, just imagine. Now they ruined it. Now she's just a homebody. She left her job at the at the Stark bunker to be the wife of Cabin's no. Old Fashion. No, she was still the head of. She was still Cabin's, Cabin's Old Fashion. Timelines change. Cabin's Old Fashion. Stay home, woman. Don't want you it, out there. I think he was the one staying home, not her. Damn straight. The way it should have been. The timeline. He goes. She goes forward. She helps build shield and everything while he stays home taking care of the kids. He says, "Kevin, you gonna sit there and do nothing? Right? I gotta wait till I gotta show up at the end. So I'm Are gonna." You <laughs> we all know how this is gonna work out. It's not gonna be Cap is home taking care of the kids. They're gonna kill Steve Rogers. That's what's gonna happen. In what? In this what if? No, this is not alive. He just doesn't become. Gonna be, she's gonna. He's gonna be Bucky. He's gonna be the skinny Bucky chasing after. This yeah, they're gonna kill him. Come on, they can't kill Captain America. Give me a break. They're, no, they're not killing Captain America. They're killing Steve Rogers because in this universe, he never became Captain America. So we have no reason for him to be alive. To chase the chick around and say how great she is. Wow, look at you. You're so hot. And then she goes with Bucky Barnes. Who's yep. <laughs> or stock. Or stock. And Steve Rogers goes back to Brooklyn, goes to the top of the Wonder Wheel, and ends it all. You're so cynical. I can't, you know, can't. Anything else you guys want to talk about regarding this Marvel stuff? I guess that's it. Is it it? Um, hold on one second. I thought I saw something I wanted to, to definitely um, touch base with you guys on. I mean, other than that, we have the whole controversy. You know, we touched base with the controversy with um, with um, Punisher, you know, which is pretty challenging. But what about this whole call the destroyer? I mean, I was talking to Cal about that recently. What? what call the destroyer? You know, who is destroyer? With aliens in um, with in Marvel, and Bleeding Cool had an article about that. <clears throat> Sorry, no. Say again what you said. Call. Destroyer? Call the Destroyer. Oh, the oh, the character, the that okay, call the destroyer. Is there a new show about them? Call the Conqueror? Supposed okay. to be an omnibus, omnibus coming out. So the if question you're, is, if you're referring to Cole from the Robert E. Howard stuff, the way you refer to him is Call of Atlantis, not Call the Destroyer. That way people know who you're talking about. I'm just calling what they, the 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 the, ep, the the comic is called. The so omnibus is being called Conan Cole. Of Samaria. Is the proper way to refer to Conan, Call of Atlantis, proper way to refer to Cole. You know what? I'll show you some comics right now. PD, give me give me control. Let me show my screen. Share my screen here. Give me the power, damn it. You shut up. Take this weight. Lord. Oh, so this is this is a new episode, right? Because this there's no way this is still gonna be part <laughs> of Charlie Cox becoming part of the Marvel Universe. It all blends together for Mars. What is it? Did I send it to you? What is, where is it? You look at Wikipedia, it says Color Conqueror of Color of Atlantis. As, uh, yeah, right there. Do you see it? Oh, Color the Destroyer. Yeah, right. It's called the Destroyer. This is number 11. Marvel Comics from the creator of Conan, Cole Destroyer. All right? Cole Destroyer. All right? Cole of Atlantis and Conan of Samaria, regardless of what Marvel wants to uh, title it so they can sell the book. Yeah, so they're doing a, so what's the difference between the two? Someone wanted, someone wanted to come straight into from um, Conan and stuff like that. What's the difference between the two, basically? Cal, enlighten us. Cole is actually the forerunner for Conan. Most of the stuff that you see with Cole, Conan ends up doing later. And what happened? Uh, Robert E. Howard wrote he created Call first, and he published Call stories. However, these guys, I think uh, he wasn't getting a lot of traction with, with a lot of traction with Call. So he reworked Call, and when he submitted it again to Weird Magazine, it was Conan. Now Conan was, Call was more introspective, more philosophical at the end of the day. This was a guy who was a barbarian who had now become king. And he was, it was almost like Game of Thrones at the end of the day. He was really on a regular basis having to deal with people trying to push him off the throne because he was a barbarian they wanted to get rid of him 
and he was realizing how it was so much harder to keep the throne than it was uh, to gain the throne. Conan is pretty much all the adventures that Cole has. It's all the adventures that Cole has, all the fighting and the, uh, the pirating, all of that stuff. And then he gets to be king. So when you get to Cole, Cole is already king. But with Conan, you get more of the adventures. And uh, Conan is a more, I don't, yeah, the way that you get Conan, he's more visceral. Conan is, uh, he's fighting more. He's woman, you know, he's over here chasing every woman who's got a, bl a pulse or something of that nature. So those are the major differences between the two. But in the actual art, you know, Robert E. Howard history, it's Call of Atlantis first, then Conan of Sumeria. Did they ever meet? In the comics, yes. And who won? Why do you think they fought? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Why do you think they fought? Just because they met. Why not? This is what, well, this in the... Oh, yes and or no. The other thing that they've also tried to outline in terms of Cole and Conan, it's believed that Cole is actually an ancestor of Conan as well. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, Cole is also part of the whole feral child uh, storyline where he's raised or he, or he's not raised. He's you know survives alone in, in the bush, if you will, until he's found by a tribe and then he's raised as well. So giving him, of course, you know, he's going to be tougher than, going to be a lot tougher than the average guy. Interesting. Well, one thing you were asking is like, why? It's like they had the success of Conan. So they did not go by issue 11. Marvel did call the Conqueror. And then they changed the name some point later. Call so, the came from like, call the Conqueror to call the Destroyer. Yeah, so like if you look the, you look at it like went on this. hiatus for a long time. Then they brought it back. There were three call series with Marvel between 1971 and 1986. And there was just a long period of there's a long gap before that was actually completed. Then he got a then he's got a, a series of mini series at Dark Horse. And the last series that I checked out, he was at IDW. I don't know what I haven't checked that out though. I don't know exactly what's going on there. Yeah, they did one series that uh, did any of you see the the film called the uh, that was the Destroyer, wasn't that called the Destroyer with uh, Kevin Sorbo? Yeah, and you saw that? Yeah, yeah that that was originally that was originally supposed to be Conan. <laughs> that script, that storyline. It's funny how things work out because Arnold Schwarzenegger was you know he wasn't really attached to the project any longer. And Dino DeLawrence wasn't on it. So he was like, look, I'm not doing it. And that, that script survived long enough for them to rework it and make it the first feature for Cull. You know, so almost in the same breath where, you know, Robert E. Howard reworks the Cull story for Conan. They reworked the Cull, uh, the Conan movie for Cull. And we see why Arnold Schwarzenegger did not want to do that movie. Interesting. Interesting. But he so, made a success with Conan overall. So that was good. Say that again? So he made a success with Conan, so that was good. Who, Robert E. Howard? No. Oh, uh, Arnold Arnold Arnold. Who? What? I said Arnold Schwarzenegger made a success with Conan, so that was good. That was a better choice to choose. Eh? No, th this was afterwards. <laughs> oh, afterwards. <laughs> this was afterwards. They did the first Conan movie, then they did Conan the Destroyer, and then the next was supposed to be Conan the Conqueror. But that script, that, that script that they had, that was the same script would later see that you would later see for the Cull movie. This came after. And Arnold Schwarzenegger wasn't attached. It wasn't like, hey, they offered him Cull. He was like, oh no, this is terrible. I'm gonna go with Conan. It was like, no, they were, you know, eventually it sat around and they say, look, let's do something with it. It became Cull. Interesting. Thank you for that. Anything you want to add to that, Petey? No, it's just the success of Conan. Find another character. And you saw <laughs> there's other characters at DC. But they, I think they, I forget the character, but they, you know, they were trying to keep the sword and sorcery thing going, but they realized instead of doing that, let's do, because it was it, I think, was it Marie, Marie Severin, that's one of her favorite books she did, inked by her brother, but then she, they, they just did Savage Sword of Conan, the, the magazine, so they had the comic book, they had a couple of other titles, and obviously, as Cal said about Cull, you know, doing him again, so. And Marvel, hell, with Marvel has them now again. So, ah, and they do the Marvel X Men stuff. Ah. 
down the drain. But anyway, but yeah, there's a success. They found something, another note, and then they did more of it. Yeah, that was the same. What was the other character they tried? I mean, there were a lot of them. They were promoting at the time. They, Tarzan was also popular. So since Tarzan was popular, who did they look at? They looked at John Carter. John Carter turned out to be not as popular as Tarzan for obvious reasons. And then, I mean, there were the characters like Farford and the Grey Mauser. I mean, they were really going for the, the sword and sorcery stuff. Mm -hmm. Guys who, I mean, the, the, the winner, if you will, the long-term victor was Conan. That was the one that everybody really loved and kept coming back to. Marvel's trying to kill it now, trying to throw it all into the Savage Avengers and all that. <laughs> with the, with, it ran, its, I mean, it went up all that time with Roy and then without Roy. And then um, next thing you know, it's like it gained a new life at uh, Dark Horse. And it was kind of weird. Um, it feels weird with Marvel and how they handle things with do the event, you know, Savage Avengers and stuff like that. For me, not Which for far. That shows you how bad my comic store is. I would go there and think, oh, Savage Avengers got canceled. Then I found that it's still running. Why don't I ever see this on the stands? People are buying it, bro. Huh? People are buying it. Savage Avengers is selling. Yeah, I'm glad that people are buying it. I would like to go to the store and actually see it. It's like, can you put this on the shelf? Can you actually, can you guys actually put your stuff out on time? I... <laughs> yes, it's, it's definitely doing, it's doing better than I would have thought myself. I thought it was going to be canceled at one point. Um, I don't know if it did. But did you see the fight between uh, Conan and Wolverine? Yeah. It's a great fight. <laughs> I just, you know, the only problem is just Johnny, they have Conan in the same period as, uh, you know, I was wondering when, when Marvel took over the whole um, Howard E. estate, that they would, um, Robert, e., Robert E. Howard estate, that how they would incorporate, why, you know, it's moving away from Dark Horse and they're coming into Marvel, or they would do. And I'm like, clearly, I guess one of the things is that they promised to bring him into the Marvel um, comic universe. And they did it. I just, I, I just didn't think they would. They did it, and you know, it's just still hard. You know, I'm still trying to go what um, um, Conan 2099. <laughs> These he lips so that. long. They did that already. Huh? They did that. We we had seen Conan come into the Marvel universe before and actually interact with some of the Marvel universe characters, albeit a what if. So you know, you got an idea of what it might be, what it might be like. Uh, him being this whole Avengers thing I, for me is just wild at the end of the day but I love the fight between him and Wolverine because that what if where they fought always rubbed me the wrong way hated that story at the end of the day having Conan run around through uh, Uatu to watch his place like he doesn't know what the hell he's doing cut off his hand I was like this is terrible this was I love that one better it was like no so this is a guy who fights freaking monsters and all he does is with a, a sword doesn't have any magic, and he always comes out to tell the story. And somehow he can't. What is it? Somehow he's gonna be taken out by Wolverine. Get out of here! Yeah, I just uh, it's just this whole Savage Avengers. Look, I yeah. I like that it's a darker color. I, I like that they have um, they have what Punisher, Elektra, Carnage, um, uh, Doctor uh, Voodoo, and I'm uh, like, what the hell? It's like. Niggas, <laughs> We put this gang of misfits together. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Uh, it, it's, it's just wild. I... They're not so misfits. I... They're oh, savages. Me, savages together. They're savage Avengers. Oh my gosh. All, All right. they need to do is just put a bomb in the net, bottom of their neck and then, you know, send them out to do their deed. Oh, you're saying it's Suicide Squad. Yes, yeah, that's what I would do. Send those dudes out. You can't control them. They're nuts, you know? But uh, I don't, you know. don't try to control the Savage Avengers. You unleash them, and then just stand back and let them do what they do. No, so I, I don't know. It's a it's an interesting comic. It's an interesting idea. Like I said, I read several of them, and it's not bad. It's just that when I stop reading, I'm like, Conan is in here. How? <laughs> that, that's the stuff that the party. Really? You like it? I don't. Like the whole thing is horrible. I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was bad. I just thought it was it was okay. It was decent. Oh, yeah. Conan I'm running around with the Punisher with the, some Venom sword. I was like, this is some Marvel nonsense. I know. I know. This is some straight Marvel nonsense at the end of the day. But, you know, that was part of what the uh, Robert E. Howard, that, before, that was one of the stipulations that they had. They were like, what are you going to do to manipulate this character? And they said, yeah, we're going to 
we're going to put them up. They made it like almost like Brewster's Millions. Like, okay, we got to produce at least 300 Conan series in a month or else they're going to take the license. Because, <laughs> you know, the, I was looking. There was everything was about Conan. The, the, the most recent thing, I like the, the uh, Jason Aaron was working on the series. That was actually, that was actually readable. And uh, a show of this guy can actually do some good writing if he wants to, because I hated everything he did with Thor, but the Conan stuff was good. So it shows, okay, you know, this guy can actually turn in a good story if he wants to. Yeah, I mean, again, you got to have some talent to be able to do this, <laughs> Savage Adventures. You know. What do you mean, no talent? Hmm? What takes no talent to do some Thor? Talent, and I say no talent. Nope. I say talent. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> You know, hey, you know, I, didn't past, I didn't think they were going to make it past a year. They're up to what episode um, issue was 17 or something like that. For all the Robert E. Howard lovers out there, Conan is still going strong. If you want to see Conan in a different light, then you can go and check out Savage Avengers. That may not may or may not be to your liking. If you're really interested in Cole, who is a forerunner to Conan, you're going to have to go to IDW and see what's going on there. And hopefully one of these days, Arnold Schwarzenegger will get it together and we can see that Conan film that we've been waiting for for the last what forty years? Is it forty years? You know, we can see we can see that particular film King as well. Conan. King Conan. We can see the King Conan film we want. Maybe we can actually see Cole in a mini series or something on TV. He's a, I mean, that's Game of Thrones with the Barbarian. You know, how can you go wrong? How can you go wrong over there? There's plenty of untapped Robert E. Howard stuff. It's more than just Conan and Red Sonja. Hmm. Yeah. What? What? There's a couple, you know. So hey, all right. So guys, let's cut this off. Is there anything else you want to add to this? No. Okay. Well, spin a rack. Thanks for being with Out. us, everybody. Um, subscribe. Give us some likes, comments. Spin a rack. Out. Out.